Welcome to SOMA. Sophie and Marianne invite you to join us in a conversation about topics interesting us and hopefully interesting you as well. Looking forward to a conversation with you all. Hello, Sophie. I'm sitting on the sofa being pathetic. <laughs> Let me. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you why. <laughs> you know, we were traveling and right before we left, like I, I was packing the car and I dropped a metal water bottle full of water on my foot and it hurt. I mean, it really hurt. But then we got in the car, we started driving, there was like beautiful scenery and I didn't use my foot. So the pain kind of went away and I totally forgot that I had done it. And later in the day, I put on shoes, like hiking boots. We were in Prescott at that time. So we were leaving the Navajo Nation and going back to San Diego. We actually spent a night in Prescott, which is beautiful, Prescott, Arizona. If you ever want to go, it's just gorgeous. Anyways, um, it was raining. So I put on my hiking boots and we went to a museum which is not a lot of walking, you know, like you drive there, you just go in and then, you know, in a museum, you go slowly from, from place to place. Um, but my foot was hurting a little bit. And I thought, oh, I tied the hiking shoes too tightly. It did not connect with me, with my water bottle incident. And so it went on, we went to San Diego, again, driving, where there is not a lot of pressure on, on the foot. And wearing different shoes I hadn't worn. Again, the foot was starting. I said, oh, those shoes don't work for me anymore, which, which happens for me. And uh, I saw my kids, my grandkids, my friends went for a long walk, just kind of feeling that there was a little bit of pain, but not really paying attention to it. Like I was definitely not in tune with my body. I was actually thinking more like, oh, maybe I put some, I need to stretch more, you know, like I was thinking, what can I do? But I wasn't thinking in the right direction. And so gradually it got worse and worse and worse to a point where any kind of walking was, I was limping, you know, I was limping and it was such a weird feeling and I realized how important walking is for me in my life because I, I love to hike I you know I don't like to go slow which a lot of people always complain about if I'm going going with some places so now I was the slowest limping along and uh, so we came back here and I had told my husband okay if it's not better by the time we are back I will go and see a doctor on my way in, which I was driving, and I want you to know said our house to the doctor's office is maybe 500 steps. So for me to drive the distance <laughs> means my foot was really, really hurting. On my way there, I suddenly remembered the water bottle incident. So this whole week, completely forgot I got paranoid about other things that osteoporosis might have been the cause or what is the cause so finally we had a reason and now I am supposed to sit for seven days with my foot elevated put compressors on it uh, do ice and and rest and I'm sitting in the middle of a place we left kind of in a hurry so it wasn't super cleaned up came back with a lot of stuff. So just a little bit of background is that we were going to be here temporarily for one year. And now it looks my husband wants to renew again. So the so one year turns into two years. And uh, I just felt like, okay, then I might as well bring a few more things from our house to make life easier here or more pleasurable or however you want to say that. So we brought more stuff in and now I'm sitting in the middle of the mess. <laughs> yeah, I'm not supposed to do anything. And it's driving me a little bit um, crazy. Yeah. I'm sorry that for the entire experience, but when I was listening to you, I was hearing really 
a key point in your conversation when on, on what you were explaining that first you said I was not in tune with my body right so um and I think that at some point some sometimes the, the, the body knock at the door and say hey pay attention to me pay attention to me and we have all a kind of uh, wake up call mm -hmm. so I'm sorry that the wake up call is so brutal because it's really not what we want you know <laughs> well actually I'm I was actually relieved because well I mean I'm not relieved that I have to sit here and do all of that right but my you know in your mind and, and it's so crazy that I totally displaced that memory of the bottle because it was very painful at the time when it happened right but my mind had gone to osteoporosis. I have a friend relative who had a break in her foot without any reasons. And then it was diagnosed that it was caused by osteoporosis. So I was getting into that paranoia. And, and that also replaced, I guess, the true cause. You know, there, there was like one way I was thinking, oh, I neglected to stretch enough. Maybe I need to do more of that which wasn't helpful, right? And then it went into that paranoia. And then I really didn't know exactly what should I do. Should I put a compress on it or not? I guess if your bones are weak and you press your foot together too much, you might cause more breaks, you know? I mean, it was just like this, Yeah, my mind going doot, 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 doot. That's that's very uh, interesting because I'm I'm reading a, a book uh, at the moment. It explains how we are so much in the mind, and we are missing that to be more in the body, right? Mm -hmm. So as you uh, you experience, Mayan, we all have it. You know, uh, I am the I'm, I'm like you. The first thing that when my body is something wrong with it, I say, oh, that's the end of the world, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but um, I think it's important that we remember that. The mind, well, its its activity is to analyze, scrutinize, you know, uh, do all, all those pondering of what's going on. The thing also is that the mind is influenced by our ego, and we all have an ego, and we need the ego, but also our memory, right? And so when when the what what does the ego? The ego it just say that's good for you, that's bad for you. What, how the ego is uh, telling you what's good and what's bad, it's just because you, with your experience in life, you know, so if you had a bad experience and uh, so you say, oh, that, that's dangerous, that's dangerous. Now, when we come back and we live in the body, it's like we say to the ego, okay, I know you're here, just leave me before now. And then as you live in your body, then, then you are less inclined of those negative thoughts, of those fear and all that. And I think that we are all that way. And it's, it's uh, at, some time, at some point, we, it, it's good to remember that, hey, you know what? That's my mind. That's my thoughts. I'm not necessarily all my thoughts, right? So, and I completely understand what you are saying about... Um, that your friend, she had an issue with her foot and she discovered something else. Because a few months ago, for personal reason, I don't do a mammogram. Mm -hmm. I do a thermography uh, just to um, make sure that of the good health of my breast. But nevertheless, six months ago, someone who is very close to me, she said that she had breast cancer. And I freaked out. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where it came from, you know. I freaked out and I ran right away for a mammogram that I didn't do for six years, you know, because I do the thermography and the thermography is always coming up clean, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, and the mammogram came came clean, you know. So and I was really coming back and say, wow, the power of the mind, mm -hmm. right? If we are not bringing it in check how miserable it can make us. Oh, you know? yeah. I mean, most misery is caused in our own brain, right? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So anyway, here you are, nursing your foot and, uh, in your house that you would like to clean. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, so now we have, again, 
And I really understand the, the frustration when we have stuff to do and we are not able to do them. But here we go again, we have the option, the option to be frustrated or the option to say how I'm going to use this time for my best self-care, you know, rethinking the priority because I understand I don't like to live in, in a house that is not clean, but I will tell you uh, that you clean today or in three days or in two weeks, it will not change much of the work you will have to do. That's oh, yeah. be the same work, right? Yeah. So now we can be upset about it or we can say, hey, it is as it is. And for now, there is nothing I can do. So I release the stress and I let it go. Right. Uh, it's easier to say than to, to do. But if you remember always, you come back to, I'm in, in my body. My priority right now is not cleaning my house, is to heal my foot. And I'm going to send love to my foot and do what I, I have to do to my foot. And the house is going to be uh, um, something that I'm going to take care of later. Right. And I, I think that, um, I don't know for you, but for me, sometimes I have to remember that thousand times a day, thousand times a day. Right. I think I usually have like a fairly high tolerance for having clutter around me, maybe more than other people, you know, because I'm, I'm just interested in a lot of different things, which all take materials Oh my, my knitting. I have like a lot of yarn around and I actually usually take pleasure in it, but there comes a point where it's like too much. And I feel like being on the trip and kind of, I think by by telling my families that there is a possibility of being here another year, I kind of submitted to the idea. And also, you know, this way more temporary, posi uh, not position, situation became something which is now going to look long, more long term. And, you know, it's kind of like, when you're traveling and you live out of your suitcase, it's okay for a while. And then there comes a time where it's just like, okay, I need to reorganize this whole situation, right? And so I think I came back with that energy of like, okay, organizing and getting my food under control again, because we had been eating out a lot and my body loves to hold on to weight whenever we do something, <laughs> you know, it just goes, Phew! it it like, I think I share that superpower with a lot of women that I can gain weight very easily, but letting go of it doesn't work that easily. You know, so, so I guess what I'm saying, I came with all these ideas and and uh, solutions and um, oh, now I think of the German word, foresights. Uh, how do you call that in English? When you, when you, intention. You know, intention. intention to okay now we're doing this and boom I'm sitting and doing nothing <laughs> you know so. yeah you know sometimes <laughs> and and uh, um it's um it's an accident so we we, we agree on that yeah. but maybe we can turn this accident in an opportunity to rethink maybe as you are here you like to take a piece of paper and say oh how do I want to organize my house so instead of rushing into what you plan for your house to make you to make your life more comfortable if you mm -hmm. plan to stay one more year then you sit and you and you plan on the paper and you you get the idea and maybe you are going to make some research for whatever you you want to do um, so in this way instead of being upset when we are upset we are creating negative energy in the body that is slowing down everything right then you have to to uh to switch to a positive energy then say okay i'm going to do the best of what i have now i need to rest so i'm going to plan uh and maybe i mean i do my research maybe I, I'm, I'm using this time to need uh something that i wanted to need for a very long time or to meditate you know you are in the position anyway i know <laughs> 24-hour meditation coming up. <laughs> so, so, I mean, that's, um, yeah, uh, that's very, very interesting what you are talking about today because um, 
lately I was uh, thinking of what I want to do with myself and I was thinking so much and I had thousand ideas and I wanted everything and I put my energy up there. I don't go, not really in the direction I, I, I want to go. And then I was thinking, Sophie, maybe you have to stop and just let life bring opportunities that you you want to explore, right? Even even with the podcast, I want everything well done. I want all uh, everything ready. And wow, it's so tiring. And I have the feeling that I put so much energy not in a in a good direction, you know. Mm -hmm. So I decided that so so interesting that we can come all together on that. Is that uh, for a week now I still have my personal practice, but instead of um, meditating in self inquiry to improve myself, blah blah blah, I just meditate to find stillness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so, and I feel so much better for a week, you know? So I think that maybe we are, do we say in English symbiosis that we are all together in that? Um, that, yeah, sometimes we need just to, uh, to stop, to stop and contemplate. Yeah, just three cool. Yeah, and, and I think that's something I tend to do anyways. I'm I'm more of a jumper, you know, I see stuff and jump into it and go like, ah, oh, let's do this. And then I overwhelm myself with like too many, too many different uh, projects I want to do and being very bad about being realistic about the time. And then like with a podcast, I used to know pretty well how to do all those steps, but then I haven't done it. And suddenly the whole tech world changed and everything is different and it's not self-explanatory. It takes time for every single thing, which should be simple or in my mind should be simple, <laughs> you know, and it turns out not to be for my ability level. You know, like somebody who works in that all the time, it probably is very simple. And they know exactly where to go to to figure out what they need to do. But so, yeah, so that's kind of like very interesting. And what I find, too, is when that happens, then I default back to finding some to do, which is easy for me and then spend time on that because. Otherwise, it's just very frustrating to keep going into one direction and, and not finding mm. success. And then it's a reality hit that the day only has so yeah. many hours. Yeah. And then, well, then you have to sleep again. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, yeah, yeah. I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, sometimes it's good just to uh, to stop and rest. And we keep saying, oh, well, stop and rest, stop and rest. It's it's harder to do. <laughs> yeah, it, it is hard to do when you have lots of interest. And you know what? I mean, this is another topic in many ways, but there's also comes a comparison in because, you know, like we live in a world of social media, right? And people... Uh, apparently have it all together and do all those things. And I always go, how can a person do everything? You know, like an example is, let's say a person is working outside the home, has three children, exercises every day, eats healthy, still has a hobby. And, you know, and my mind goes, oh, how do you do it all? Yeah, well, so first, I think that you have a very good point. When we are our own path to do whatever we want to do, it's important not to compare ourselves, you know, uh, with other people, because again, we go back into the ego and the memory. And then if they do that, I should do that. Well, their path is their path, right? And, um, and there is also another concept that is so important in our society and we don't realize so much is a assumption right mm -hmm. so right when we see and, and I'm, I'm like you when i see people they have they have a podcast they have a book they are they are doing conference they're doing all the things wow I, mean, I wish i would do everything they are not alone they might pay someone to do the social media they might pay someone to uh to write the blog you know so i mean that's we assume that people, they are superhero all the time, not just people. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and, absolutely. And they, and they have their, their own way and path to deal with everything. The image that we are receiving might not be the reality. So I think it's important to not compare ourselves and not us. Right. Right. So assume, yeah, definitely. I re definitely. remember that it was um, Sashi was always saying that don't assume anything, you know. And it was the example that it stick to my mind again and over and over and say, when you go at the grocery store and you see the cashier, if she doesn't smile or he doesn't smile to you, maybe he had a bad day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nothing yeah. to do with you. <laughs> well, that's for sure. I mean. We make a lot of assumptions about, you know, so the reaction of another person actually has to do with us instead of like, that's, that's their story. Yeah. Let's get back to sitting on the sofa doing nothing. So one of the things, one of the things I'm, I'm really trying to figure out is how to stay still active. So I've been thinking more about chair yoga to at least do my upper body because I'm not used to sitting on my butt all day long. And it's a little bit like it's enjoyable for like one day and then it becomes uh, not so enjoyable. Yeah. I just feel like, especially as we get older, our bodies decline so fast. I don't know if decline, but I, I think it's the right word. You know, you just get stiffer. And after we are done, my intention is to do some stretching and chair yoga and I think this this experience also gives me sympathy both sympathy and and not people which which have like uh movement limitations so I'm I'm trying to say it gives me sympathy with my husband because I always want him to move more <laughs> he has a bum knee but I think it gives me a lot of admiration for people which had a, a disease or an accident and had to lay in bed for months and then work themselves out of it again. I mean, that just takes a lot of willpower. And so in other words, I'm telling myself to shut up. Said seven days on the sofa is a gift. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and again, <laughs> instead of, of being hard on yourself, turn it into okay it is as it is how i i can make it the best of it you know i mm -hmm. like that you say uh chair yoga uh, that um you know and and maybe you don't have access of those and i don't know how exactly if your foot need to be always elevated but maybe you can find there is those little roller when you you just put your leg on on top of it and you you know, you move. So, I mean, it would, your foot would be a little elevated and still if you you need to move in your, in your house, you could. I don't know if that's very practical. I just. Yeah. I, I don't idea, think but... it's practical for, I'm hoping this is short term. Yeah. Hopefully my body is going to heal yeah. fast. Well, you know. Well, it's not hopefully is that a certainty that you are to heal, you know. <laughs> Right, right. It's just a time frame. Yeah. So now, <laughs> now we have to agree on the time frame. So because and that that's a, that's the same point too. You know, every time we we kind of fix ourselves uh, a time frame. You know, like uh, the other day. Well, I remember a couple of weeks ago, I had a, a cold. You know, it's a cold, and one week later, I'm okay. Well, honestly, it took me between two and three weeks to be fit again. And uh, at some point, my mind was going in there, well, what is going wrong with me? It turned out into something, you know, but um, it's just because I, I I gave myself a time frame that was not reasonable, you know. Right. So, and again, I, I'm, I'm not saying that, that you, you should not be fit in one week. It just said, be open to the possibility that it might take a longer time. And again... Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's always the idea to instead of living in the mind, we come back to the body. If your body is telling you that it's not ready to walk, your body is true. Your body is true, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. I'm going to check on you next week. Okay. <laughs> with with your, your list of project and priority and what you are. You know, I think that any experience is an experience for us to grow. The good experience are the bad experience. So that's not a fun experience that you have, but what is it you can learn about yourself? 
and you, you don't have to answer it's just just something to think about what what does it teach me does it teach me that i have always in the run does it teach me that i need to stop a little does it teach me i need to do more yoga i don't know i don't know i definitely teaches me to not be so achievement oriented there you go there you go you already are learning something from this this challenge with your foot i think that uh yeah yeah we learn what you have to learn you know in in a Sometimes it's a good way, and sometimes we have a kind of a tough experience uh, yeah. there, you know. Um, yeah, I really believe that we always come wiser and stronger when we say, what do I learn from what I just lived? You know, it's a, that's the same thing when I meet people, they hurt me, and I say, what did I learn? You know, what did I learn from, from this painful experience? So, um, yeah, for me, it's, uh, yeah, that's that. Life is a, is an, a, a life of experience. It's always about experience. <laughs> and it's always about growing more. Yeah. But I guess you can choose to stop growing. And then you're just, at, at any age, I guess you can. And then you're just doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah, I, I did like therapy a long time ago. And the person I was with, she would always say, you know, don't think you're ever finished because like whatever it is, we are like an onion and we might peel off one layer, but then there's another layer underneath, which is kind of cool because it means we always have more to go into and to do more and to learn more. But it's also frustrating because sometimes working on yourself is just not that much fun. No. And it's like, okay, I want to be done with this one, you know, I'm, I'm done. I know. Anyways, I mean, yeah. There is a quote, I don't remember exactly the quote, but we are like a piece of art. We are always in progress, uh, something like that. So I think it's, uh, and we are beautiful, mm. oh, it was something, we are beautiful as we are and always it's a work in progress. I believe also that if we were not trying to grow, whether we want to grow mentally, emotionally, spiritually, for me, I think that life would be boring. <laughs> I agree. I think, I think that's why we are friends, you know, because we both wanting to experience more. Not more in a sense like, oh, I have to go to whatever, this amusement park and experience that. But just like in terms of opening our mind to what's what's yeah. available in the world, be it learning new things. I see myself very much as a maker. I'm always interested in learning more things to do, techniques or, or just projects or whatever. And you are very interested in the world of the mind and body and health. I mean, me too, but mm. not to the level you are committed to, to that. But there's always more to explore. Like, we are not finished. And, okay, I want to speak really quick about being a maker. So a while ago, we talked about starting some on our Patreons that we have, like, our, uh, how do you say, not a ruffle, but, like, uh, drawing prices from to give something to people which support us, right? So I made this beautiful socks I really love. And I'm, this is another thing. I'm thinking of, of starting to offer them with some other artists for a very high price because we can go into value and all of that some other time. Let's write it down, <laughs> you know, valuing ourselves. But anyways, I gave them to a friend, so pair I finished. And I have all kinds of ideas of doing some other ones in, in that direction. I re received some beautiful photos, so I'm going to post that to our Patreon. I think we should set a date and then we will do like a drawing from everybody who has supported us to win one pair. Like, so it's going to be like one person gets a custom made pair of this really beautiful, crazy, art socks oh it's wonderful <laughs> maybe i put my name in it so maybe i can win <laughs> yeah you can put your name in it 
kidding. Just kidding. Yeah, yeah. So that is what's happening. If people want to support what we are doing, they can go to patreon.com and look for Soma, explore Soma. I think we have different levels of support people can choose. Basically, podcasts cost some money to put together. And even so, we are still at the beginning. There's always things like, you know, equipment we might want to improve. The sound on this episode might be kind of lousy because I'm using the computer mic since I couldn't get to my regular place. I couldn't figure out how to keep my leg up comfortably and still use uh, the mics. But anyway, so, you know, there's equipment, there's hosting, there's all of those things. And our Patreons basically are the ones supporting us in being able to do that. Yeah. And we want to reward them. And we have different fun things for sure. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm also posting for our Patreon meditation uh, article that help to take care of ourselves. <laughs> There you go. And you're very good at that. I very much appreciate it. <laughs> so thank you, Maren, for sharing your story and how, yeah, how we can turn out into something that uh, helping you to move forward. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Sophie. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for sharing your precious time with us. We love to have a conversation with you and there are several places you can reach us. One is Instagram, Explore Soma Podcast. That's mostly Marianne <laughs> speaking to you there. On Facebook, uh, there is a page also Explore Soma Podcast and Sophie is the one talking to you there. And then we have a Patreon account, Explore Soma Podcast and both of us are hopping in and out, and we are really trying to build communities there. If you want to join us, we would love it. And of course, you can support us there, but you can also be there and be part of the conversation. If there is no money in your pocket <laughs> to spare, we totally get that. Believe us, we have been there. Thank you so much. Take care until we meet again.